love our Father in heaven and our big brother Jesus the Christ who is at the right hand and to the Holy Spirit that resides in each and every blood wash believer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, Papa, take I thank God for my brother from another mother, <laughs> your pastor, Devon, Devon, however you say it, or Tom. Amen. I don't know, we just clicked and we thank God for him. Amen. Amen. I thank God for him in our lives. Amen. And our dear sister, thank you for being up in the pulpit with us today as well. Amen. Thank you, women, for asking the Lord to call this vessel to come and stand behind the sacred desk to bring a message. Amen. My brother already said we are from Mount Zion, and I do have my oldest daughter and my three granddaughters with me today. Amen. 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 And I thank God for all of you who came out on today. Amen. 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 God is an awesome God. Amen. 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 I'm not going to tarry because I know you have an afternoon service. However, we will let the Holy Spirit have his way. Amen? Amen. The scripture lesson was read already. I just want to go back to the first verse. The first verse uh, of Psalm 133. Amen? Once my phone gets there, you know, sometimes these smart devices are not so smart. Amen. I mean, it was fine when I was sitting back there, but now I'm like crazy. Amen. But to God be the glory anyway. Amen. It's not coming up. But anyway, it, I can kind of remember what it says. Behold, it is good for brothers and sisters to dwell together. Amen. 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 And let us pray. Father, we just pause right now to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be in your house on this day. Lord, you have prepared us to come in, oh God, Lord, and to worship you in spirit and in truth. So I'm asking right now, oh God, Lord, that you would shake anyone who has a sleepy spirit upon them, oh God, Lord. I'm asking, oh God, Lord, that anyone whose mind is thinking other than godly thoughts that you would just throw them out, oh God, Lord. I'm asking, oh God, Lord, that you would clear their minds, oh God, Lord. I'm asking, oh God, Lord, that hearts would be penetrated on today, oh God, Lord. I'm asking, oh God, Lord, that we would hear from you, oh God, Lord, and your word will not return void, oh God, Lord. I'm asking, oh God, Lord, that you, oh God, would always increase as I decrease. For you are the potter, and I am simply the clay. Use me, Lord, have thine own way. And the people of God shall say, Amen and Amen. And sticking with your theme, unity in Christ, serving God, uplifting mankind. Unity in Christ, serving God, uplifting Man, come. Well, I'm going to bombard you this morning with a couple of questions before we delve into this word. And the question is, when you look at yourself as a Christian, can you honestly say that you stand in unity with those who are in the body of Christ? Can you say that you are doing all that you can do to uplift mankind? Are you focused on being united than being opposed to the will of God and his people? Simply, if you had to answer the questions, do you see yourself as a church that is united or divided, or even in the body of Christ. Beloved, actions speak louder than words. And how we act to 
towards one another will reveal itself, Amen. be it good or bad. Amen, Amen somebody? Amen. And sometimes, no matter how hard we try to put on airs, if we're not acting like the Christians we profess to be, Houston, there's a problem. Amen. Why? Because if we keep it 100%, we got some people whose intention is to cause nothing but division in God's house. Amen. Or against, amongst any other believers. Amen? Amen? How many of you seen the movie Fighting Temptations? Yes. You had to pass the sister who would rather have stepped on everyone's toes and get in the way of God's will to fulfill her own desires. She wanted to be this choir director that would lead them to a competition where she knew that they would win and she, I guess, thought it would be all about her. Amen, somebody? And if anyone got in her way, there was heck to pay. See, she was one of those sisters perpetrating fraud. Amen. Like others in the house of God, you know, she could not find anything positive. She found something wrong with everything and everybody except for herself. Because she was so blinded behind her own deception. Amen, somebody? She could not see a real Christian if the person was standing right there in front of her. Like some folk, she'd rather be divided instead of being united. She, like others, would rather tear the pastor down, the preacher, and even the Sunday school teacher. She would talk about the ushers and the choir, too. In her mind and others' minds, they are inwardly knocking everything down that others have been called to do. Why? I'm so glad you asked. Because they are bitter and they wonder why no one wants to be around them. Yes, people, these are those who are supposed to be Christian who do these things, amen? They're sitting in the pews, condemning instead of doing what God has called each and every one to do. We are to uplift mankind. We cannot do it when the house is divided. Unity in Christ says we put all of the foolishness behind and remember that we have been called to a position of service that calls for the body to be united. Amen. Amen. How many of you used to watch Good Times? Yes. Amen. Every hand should be up. You remember JJ and his friends? They said united we stand, divided we fall. We're tired of the When we are serving and uplifting mankind, amen, somebody? The purpose is to lead others to Christ together. David said in the scripture, Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It should be a good thing for us to be together as a body of Christ. There should be no jealousy in God's house. No thinking I'm better than you because I'm a soprano and you're an alto. Or I got picked for the lead solo and you didn't. Come on, somebody. I can cook and you can't. That's why you're serving and I'm at the stove. Come on, somebody. Or because I am the usher and I tell you where to sit and I'm going to sit you where I know you don't want to sit because I simply don't like you. We can't take our positions and use them for our own glory. Amen, somebody? Beloved, in these last and evil days, we have to become a united front in God's house no matter how big or small. 
full it is. Amen, somebody. No matter how many people are here, no matter how many people show up or don't show up, we got to stick together. The enemy is roaming around like a roaring lion. He's seeking and he's looking to devour and destroy all that he can. And if you look at the house of God, it looks like he is winning. Look around, beloved. See, beloved, we got work to do. And that work is about being about our father's business. And if our minds ain't right, how are we going to do right? Huh? The house of God is where people come looking for something other than what the world has to offer. See, when we come to church, we're looking for peace. We're looking for something positive, a happy medium, a place to worship with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that we are on one accord, that are like-minded, that are promoting the body of Christ in a positive way. We can have unity by leaving the world outside the door, by preparing ourselves before we get here. Beloved, I know life is rough. However, this is the place where we can go and should go to find safety in the tabernacle, in the house of God. Mankind outside has enough of its own issues without Christ. So why would we as a body of believers want to take up their habits? Our goals, beloved, should to live in such a way that others will want what we have. And they will want to partake of serving this God. That's unity. Beloved, we are not going to be 100% all the time. We're not perfect, but we can attempt to be our best so we can do our best for the Lord, because at the end of the day, it is about pleasing God. Amen. Beloved, you better know this, we will give an account Amen. regarding our service to the Lord. Amen. And I just stopped by to tell you that he is not going to concern himself with assessment. He is not going to concern himself about all these different ministries. He's not going to concern himself about rubbing elbows to get a high position in Zion. It's going to be about what you did or what you do to serve and uplift mankind. Since you feed the hungry, since you clothe the naked, since you visit the sick, since you are out visiting someone in prison, since you are out with his help, lead someone to Christ. See, Jesus is not concerned about pew warmers. Ha. See, beloved, some of us can come to church every Sunday and still not be connected to him. He is concerned with those who are not only hearers of the word, but doers. Beloved, we can come here every Sunday and we don't do nothing but come. Then what is our purpose? We've missed the whole point. When we do nothing, we were not saved to sit down. There is a need not only out there in the world, but somebody in this church or another member may be sitting right next to you and hurting. But we don't recognize their pain because we're too busy ignoring them because we either don't have the time or we just don't want to be bothered. to do. Uh, see, I contend at the house if we're worshiping in our house, and it ain't spiritually or physically right, it's a problem. But love, we gotta take the time to embrace one another. Those we see every Sunday. How? How do we come in here and ignore our 
brothers and sisters. Paul says we ought to greet one another with a holy kiss. Do you hug and kiss one another begrudgingly? Or do you greet one another with Jesus' joy? <laughs> People know when you are faking. We got to get over ourselves. If we're going to see the kingdom grow. Amen, somebody? You know, beloved, a lot of people don't come to church no more because they feel like those of us who are here are hypocrites. But I tell them, it's always room for one more high. See, we come to church, that's right, because we know it's a hospital for the sick. Amen. Somebody, uh, some of us are struggling mentally, physically, emotionally, and even financially. And we come to church, huh? Because we would like to believe that people are here just like us, huh? They know that once they step over the threshold, huh, and see the sister or brother or even the pastor, huh, everything is going to be all right, huh? even if it's for a little while. See, the weight of the world will be lifted. Because the church you're in is a united front. Amen. Somebody. The presence of the Lord is here. And they can feel it in the atmosphere. The spirit of unity of Christ and serving God is here. And in the service they are uplifted. See, they found that there was joy in the house. They found peace in the house. There was love in the house.
got work to do. There are many members in the house of God. We're one body. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 12. 12 through 31. Read it in its entirety. It talks about the unity of the body. It says the ear can't say to the foot or the eye, whatever, I don't need you. And that's how we, beloved, can't say each other. Because everybody in here can't cook. Everybody in here can't sing. Everybody in here can't usher. We need every one of us together. We need to let go of foolishness in our houses. A house divided will sure fall. But united, you can do so much. It don't have to be a whole lot of you. But when people see that there's unity in your house, and that you're working to build the kingdom, they're going to want a part of that. But if you're here with a sour face every Sunday, nobody going to want to come here. That's every church. If you're sitting down in the pew and somebody new comes in and sit next to you and you turn and around like, they don't want that. That's rejection right there. You better hope you weren't entertaining the angel. We gotta be glad when we come 
to the house of the Lord. That matter said, leave everything outside the door. There's joy in here. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is here. If nothing or no one else meets you here, God is here. We just got to be open to his presence and to his Holy Spirit. And united, you can do it. Unity in Christ. In Christ. And we got to serve God. And then we can uplift men. Be on one accord. When you see the enemy coming in, trying to separate you, you got to pause and say no. Pause and pray right then and there. If he's coming in choir rehearsal, if he's coming in the kitchen, if he's coming on the usher board, if he's trying to come up against your pastor, you pray right there. Don't say, well, I'm going to wait till tonight. Now, pray. Call Jesus. Demons tremble at that name. Beloved, we got work to do. The doors of the church are open. Why don't you stand on your feet as we extend the Christian invitation?